days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time, and one of the biggest topics of conversation throughout camp and is continued after this preseason game is this wide receiver room because only six guys, probably six, maybe seven, depending on what happens with the quarterback position, uh, will make this roster. And which six that it's going to be has been a big question. After this preseason game, Alex, have we learned anything into the insight of who these guys are going to be and who is not going to be? Of course we have, folks. Of course we've learned insight, right? But really the only insight that we've learned is that Debo, Samuel, and Brandon Ayuk are definitely at the top of the pecking order. And if you want to hear the rest of what we potentially think this room is shaping out to be, you need to make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button right now before we dive any further into this, Ant, because there's a lot of fluctuation. There's definitely some people who have set themselves apart. There's definitely some people who have elevated their, their play, right, and have gotten themselves now to a point where we feel f- fairly comfortable with where they're at, um, but besides Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, those two guys at the top of the list, there's still a lot of fluctuation in terms of where guys fall right in that three through six type of category. Yeah, and I think we should just take our time and go through this pecking order and really put these guys in the position where they sit right now, currently um, probably on the depth chart. Uh, I know we're only through one game, so it only shed a little bit of light, but I did think we got a glimpse into how some of these players were going to be used. Um, you're right, Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel are a cut above. Um, they are the main guys. And then I think it's for the beginning of off-season workouts, basically, we've been talking about who is going to be quarterback three. It's been a topic on every single you know, per, uh, 49 hour channel. Everyone's trying to figure out who wide receiver three is. Um, I think that Muhammad Sanu has had a nice hold on that position. Um, he didn't play in the preseason game, which means I don't think they're concerned about him having to earn his roster spot. Uh, they believe that he's going to be on this football team. I believe he's going to be on this football team. From what we've seen in camp, he's looked pretty good. Um, he's able to go up you know, and use his body to shield defenders and make plays. Um, overall, still getting behind the defense sometimes, which is the big question mark after last year with the lack of speed. Um, so he looks like a Sav um, veteran that can get out there and really make plays. Yeah, I remember the Savage veteran. I kept it. Um, and he's going to be able to make plays. And right now, he is that guy. There is guys pushing him. But I think Muhammad Sanu um, is is pretty secure in that in that wide receiver three to four range. Agreed. Um, and I think you and I both are starting to maybe come around to the idea that they may not have a standard traditional wide receiver three, but more like a rotational, you know, piece of different guys who are going to be going in and operating as the three in different sets in different situations. I think this is what Kyle ideally envisions his offense to be is having guys that are like what Sanu was back when he was in um, Atlanta in terms of the speed and things of that nature. Obviously that is not that version of Muhammad Sanu, but they can recreate that version of Muhammad Sanu with other pieces as well as guys like Taylor Gabriel that he's had in Atlanta all the way back to his days in Cleveland where he had guys like Travis Benjamin, quick speedy guys who could do a lot of stuff over the middle. Um, So he's definitely looking for an aggregate, right? He's trying to put this together with a bunch of different pieces. And one of the guys who's kind of now started to stand out in camp and definitely showed it yesterday was Trent Shurfield. Trent Shurfield with the big touchdown, right, from Trey Lance. He has shown the ability to not only have speed and get behind guys, but run some very clean routes. I like a lot of the things that I've seen out of him. He's been very physical in camp. He was very physical on the touchdown route yesterday, the big play. Um, you know, we didn't really get to see a lot after that big touchdown. We got that big touchdown on Trent Sherfield, and I was like, all right, kid, you're done for the day. Let's look at some of these other guys and these other pieces. Uh, but Trent Sherfield has kind of maneuvered and solidified himself now into that, that fourth slot. Um, and not to take away anything from Muhammad Sanu, but you kind of mentioned it. The fact that he didn't suit up yesterday kind of signals to me that Shanahan's very comfortable with him as a guy, one of the one of the six wide receivers in this room. Yeah, I think there's a lock on those first four guys. I think those guys are, are pretty comfortable um, for the 49ers. I think you have the two, you know, of course, up front, the big two, Ayuk and Debo. Uh, and then these guys are kind of in the next category. Um, these guys together, Sherfield and Mohamed Sanu. Uh, they're, they're secure. They know what they're doing. They're both veteran players. Uh, Sherfield coming on strong, didn't really get to do a lot in Arizona because he played for uh, a Dingleberry. But... Um, 
he, he's going to have those opportunities now playing in San Francisco, and he's going to be able to, you know, execute. He, he's proven it in camp. Every single day we were there, he, he did something spectacular. Uh, and, and Saturday was no different. He did something spectacular against the Chiefs. Um, this is what you come to expect from him. I, I think people are going to be very happy with him. He, he's going to fill that Kendrick Bourne role. Um, he's going to be able to do it very well. I'm not saying he's going to be the third wide receiver because I do think it's going to be depending on what Kyle wants to do personnel-wise against what team he's playing and the scheme that they run. Um, that'll determine who is the guy getting the you know the bulk of those third wide receiver um, snaps because I do think there are other guys we're going to be talking about that also will have sil- certain skill sets and traits that Kyle's going to want to use in certain situations against certain teams. Um, so I think it is more fluid. It's kind of like the running back room where there's a lot of fluidity to it. I think there is with this um, wide receiver room as well. Agreed. And those four names are the ones that we're comfortable with. Those are the four names that have really set themselves apart through the first 13 days of camp and now after the first preseason game, right? But those four you're comfortable with. That still leaves two spots, right? Ideally, two wide receiver spots that are left to be filled. Yeah. And I think there's probably nine guys in contention after after this, you know, first preseason game. So nine total names, four of them we've already given you. That means five guys left competing for two spots. And there's a lot of talent in those five names as well. So it's going to get very, very interesting to see what happens. Um, a guy that has been sliding down in this group of five has been Richie James. Richie James has not had the type of performance in camp that he needs to be having. Dropped a big pass on what, would, on what would have been a third down completion on an outbreaking route towards the sideline that hit him right in the hands. Not really doing much in the return game either. Not helping his stock at all. This guy is probably right now out of, out of all the names is down near the bottom. He's either in that eighth or ninth slot. I think that this would have came last year. I think they would have ultimately moved on from him last year if they didn't have all the injuries at the wide receiver position, including Ayuk, Debo, Samuel, Jalen Hurd. All of them were out, and that's what helped Richie James be able to make the roster. I called for this last year. I think now it's it's going to happen. Uh, he's having drops in practice. He's having drops in the game. Uh, he doesn't look like he's all you know all in as far as he doesn't. He's not ready to make plays from a mental standpoint. Uh, his kick returns were. Not great. It was pretty much what you expect. Status quo for him. Uh, that is not what you need from this guy. You need this guy to be making plays. Um, it, it, it's crazy because in games he will show up and have these magical moments, you know, against like he did against Green Bay last year where he just had a big game. You're like, here's Richie James, and then he disappears for a while. Whether that is him not getting opportunities or, you know, him just not showing up uh, is to remain to be seen. But I think Kyle Shannon, if this guy was really going to play at that, level consistently would have him on the field consistently and give him opportunities so i i think that this guy hasn't you know made those avenues and ways for him to get more opportunities uh and after seeing him in practice i know why because he drops the ball and if you're going to drop passes right over the middle especially ones that could have been touchdowns uh, which we saw in practice a lot then you're you're going to be relegated to the bench you're not going to get as much reps um, this might be the beginning of the end for him. It definitely is. He's sliding down the board. I thought for a while he was right there around the number six spot. Now I think he's kind of there in the eight or nine range. Uh, he's looking up at some of these other guys, and um, they have a lot of skill sets as well, and he's going to have to compete with them. And speaking of guys in the eight or nine range, Nasimba Webster, who has moved himself up into the eight or nine range, range based on what we saw with the reverse, right, the big run that he had, and the kick return stuff that we saw out of Nasimba Webster. Uh, Simba Webster is going to have an opportunity to compete. He is only making this roster, though, if he can have a bigger impact with the offense. Yes, the return stuff, he looks better than everyone else so far. However, that can't be the only thing he adds to this roster. He has to add something on offense. We saw a little bit of it yesterday with the reverse. There's going to have to be avenues in the receiving game that he's going to have to add to as well. You can't just use him as a gadget guy that can only run the ball around on the outside and return kicks for you. He's going to have to be able to get open in space. He's going to have to be able to make catches. He's going to have to establish himself as a potential either a possession receiver or a guy who can take the top off the defense at certain points in time. He's going to have to have a role in the receiving game in order to work himself up from the current position he finds himself now, which is around that 8 or 9 range. His job was to make the the coaches have a conversation about him, and he did that. Um, The kick return thing gets you in the conversation, and then being able to produce on offense uh, gets you even with Richie James and River Craycraft. Um, that's what he needed to do. That's what he's done. So he's put himself at least in contention for an opportunity to make this football team. Um, it's going to be hard. It's going to be an uphill battle. 
if he has some more great returns and he's able to get a couple touchdowns out of it, he will put the pressure on the 49ers to keep him because they won't want to lose him in that area of the game. Um, the worst scenario for him is if somebody else steps up and does really well in kick return as well because right now he is not as good as these other guys in the receiving game. Yes, he looked good doing what he did. Uh, he looked better than Richie James did in the Richie James role but I'm not sure that a lot of guys can't perform the Richie James role that are on this football team. So um, he's going to have to do more. He's going to have to produce. The Chargers game is going to be important for him uh, to see what he can do because if not, you know, unfortunately, you know, the cuts are going to start coming down and he could be one of those guys. Let's see what he does. Let's see if he can produce. He'll have opportunities. Um, hopefully he makes it happen. But you're right. If you're not going to produce on offense, you're not going to make this football team. Um, and he's got to get that done. There's going to be no straight returners for this team. You're not keeping someone just because they can return the football. They have plenty of guys that can do that and do it to a decent level. That's why Richie James is on the out, and that's why this guy's on the up. But how far up can he get? That's going to be the question. How far can he actually climb? Because if you're sitting there at eight or nine, there are some names that you're going to have to try and overcome and climb. And a few of these names have shown that they are diverse aspects and diverse pieces of this Kyle Shanahan offense. Can you overcome that? I don't know if he can. I don't know if he can have the impact as a runner physicality-wise. I don't know if he can have the impact with some of the route running and some of the other things that these guys can do. He's going to have a lot to show in a very short amount of time to try and accomplish Correct. it. It is going to be a big hill for Simba Webster to try and make this roster. Um, and sliding in at seven, I want to know who you think is around that seven spot because we got three names left, right? We have Travis Benjamin, you have Jawan Jennings, you have Jalen Hurd. Where are you feeling these guys fall? Who would you slot in at seven right now? I think Travis Benjamin is who I put a seven. Uh, and the real reason is, is we've saw him do things in practice and look great and beat, you know, defenders down the field and get separation. And we're talking five yards of separation, um, operate over the middle, make catches and stuff. We've seen it in practice, but it didn't translate to the game yet. Um, could it have been the situation he was in with the quarterback he was working with? 100%. Uh, the play where he got clamped on the slant um the corner had inside leverage and was definitely taking away the slant pass because they knew they were blitzing and he, he knew he was gonna have to find the hot um josh rosen threw it to the wrong guy if josh rosen throws it to Jawan jennings it's a nice first down play uh, once again a guy didn't recognize what he's supposed to do didn't get it out there and then everyone talks about how travis benjamin didn't make the play context matters once also again. also can we just be honest it was a terrible throw it was a bad throw. It's high, uh, high slant like that. A high never slant good. over his head. Yeah, as if you know he's supposed to get up in space while moving full speed across the field and somehow grab that ball. But I mean, he had one opportunity to return a punt. The other ones he didn't really. Um, but he didn't take advantage of that one opportunity. He needed to make something happen. He kind of tried the whole stall wait technique and then get going. Um, so I mean, from that standpoint, I just think he has to do something to stand out because. The guys ahead of him are going to do things to stand out. One of them did in the game, and one of them you can only think is going to make things happen. And if he doesn't, he won't be on the roster, but I still think he's going to. I agree with you there. Um, look, I would I would say Travis Benjamin at seven is fair because I would put the next two guys kind of close to each other. But Travis Benjamin is definitely going to have to do – going to have to pass the eye test in a game. He's passed the eye test in practice, and that's great. But it's practice. Yeah. Are we talking about practice? you got to do that thing that you live and die for, right? in a game situation. It hasn't happened yet, but it's also only been one preseason game. So there's no reason to overreact. And in all fairness to Travis Benjamin, they stuck him back there five times to return punts. Unfortunately for Travis Benjamin, the Chiefs offense was able to move the ball to midfield and their punter has a leg. He's got a cannon. You're not returning punts in those situations. No. You're sticking your feet at the 10, fair catching it, or praying to God that this dude doesn't able to cough and corny at the one, which he did, folks. So there's really not a lot to... I don't have a real big breakdown of Travis Benjamin as a punt returner because he did everything that he was supposed to do. Stick your feet at the 10, ball goes over your head, it goes over your head, sell it, try and get them and prevent them from being able to pin that ball inside the inside that 10-yard line right by getting the ball to pop up in the air. Uh, however, the punter did a great job, and other times the ball rolled into the end zone, which is what you want, and you're bringing the ball back out to the 20, you know? So I'm not worried about Travis Benjamin yet. Want to see what he does this week against the Chargers. He's going to have that extra bit of motivation, as you talked about, Ant, because he was underutilized for so long out there in Los Angeles with that team. I want to see how it translates to in-game situation. I want to see if he's maybe operating, if Jimmy runs a little bit more with that first unit out there in space, especially if they have Muhammad Sanu sit another game and let Travis Benjamin operate a little bit more with that first group and Trent Sherfield potentially in some four wide receiver sets. It'll be very interesting to see. But the next guy at six, right, I think I know where you're going with this. I think I know who you're putting there. I think right now at six, you would have Jalen Hurd. Am I, am I mistaken? 
I would probably have Jalen Hurd six. That's fine. Uh, I, it's either him or the, the other guy that we're going to talk about. Correct. Um, to me, it's it's they're both right there with each other. Um, so we'll talk about Jalen Hurd at six. Um, I think it's just injury concerns. Other than that, there there are no concerns for me. I seen how he played at, at practice. Uh, he looked good in eleven on elevens. All the talk about him not being able to get separation are complete kapui. Um, he definitely can get separation. He can def- definitely operate in the middle of the field. Where guess what? That's where Jimmy Garoppolo loves to live. Um, that's where Trey Lance, you know, can can get better at. But Trey Lance can hit players over the middle. And you know what you would like to have a six foot five, two hundred and thirty pound guy over the middle um, that can go up and get the football. It makes it makes life a little bit easier for you. Um, plus another guy that operates well um, with yards after the catch, which is something you're looking for. If he plays in these preseason games, he's going to be on this roster. If he doesn't, he won't. That's as simple as it gets. Um, the talent is there 100%. He's going to prove it. As long as they put him out there in these games, he's going to prove that he belongs on this football team. There's too many things you can do with him. But we've seen them run him with reverses and all that stuff in practice. They definitely have a game plan. They executed some of that game plan on Thursday and wh- how they were getting him involved. And you can tell that the quarterbacks felt comfortable getting him the football. Um, the teammates were starting to rally around him. So there is a little bit of a, a momentum push for him. Uh, so let's hope he can keep stacking good days together because I think he can definitely be a dynamite player on this team. But um, fifth or sixth is kind of where I would have him. Yeah, that's correct. I would. The only reason I thought six was because Jawan Jennings went out there and, and put together a nice little game on film. He had some nice catches. So I think... I think I want to give Juwan a little more credit right now than I want to give Hurd, and that's only because Hurd hasn't played yet, and that's the big question mark. Hurd not being on the field, stubs a toe, he's never able to play. Um, I don't think either one of us have concerns about his ability to perform because I went into that practice on Thursday, especially after all the talks on Wednesday about Jalen Hurd this and Jalen Hurd that. He's cooked. He's cooked. He don't have it no more. He can't get separation. And you and I are kind of sitting there going, Man, I don't know. I seen him. I saw him running against air, and the routes look crisp. He's in and out of breaks really quickly. Like this isn't a dude that's going to get bullied or bodied by anybody. He's too big and strong and athletic, and he's usually on balance. That's his whole thing, right? He was a he was a great contact balance runner at at bait at uh, Tennessee. Excuse me. Like that shouldn't that doesn't just go away after a few years of not playing. Like maybe it's some rust, and then we see him in practice, and it's like oh. These people have a different expectation of what separation is. You want five yards of separation, the guy falling down like on the Charlie Warner route. They every, want the college football separation. That, 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 ain't, that ain't how this works, folks. This is the NFL. This is the elite of the elite. This is the 1% of the 1% of potentially the 1% at times. Like that's just not how it – It's a how lot you of 1%. Operate. It's a lot of 1%. But that's – that again, you can't expect that. And we went to that practice expecting you know something concerning with Jalen Hurd and all I, all I got out of it was – he gosh darn looked like one of the better wide receivers on this team out there. And if he's healthy, that's what he's going to be. And he's going to be a dynamic tool for Kyle Shanahan to use. Yeah. And talent-wise, dynamically, he looked better than Muhammad Sanu on that Thursday practice. Oh, 100%. Um, right away, I mean, you, he stood out. And I think what you're seeing is they're able to build this roster around guys who are interchangeable, but guys who also have a lot more size. That's always been a conversation for 49ers fans for years, even since Harbaugh was there. Was, Why don't we have big wide receivers? And now they've got guys that play big and play physical and are able to uh, handle these catches over the middle and handle these chain moving uh, plays uh, and also can do a lot of different things. So Jalen Hurd is there. I know a lot of people still have the questions. Well, I don't even want to talk about Jalen Hurd until he plays a game. You're, you're, that's fine to tell. That's fine. You can say that when he does play a game, though. Be be well. You can welcome to our side because it's going to happen. Um, the guy shows it. The guy's got the ability. Uh, but I, I think we have him where you have him. Um, and then you kind of mentioned Jawan Jennings. We'll go ahead and start talking about Jawan Jennings because I do like this guy a lot. Um, I kind of thought he was going to come out and have a good game, and he did. He started a week late than everyone else because of you know the issues he had with the testing and all that. Um, and now he's out there and he's playing catch up, and he's playing catch up real fast. He is getting involved. Those tunnel screens that he ran, uh, the catch over the middle from Rosen, um, the guy looks like he fits in the NFL. The speed is not an issue. He does find separation. Um, all the things you're able to do with him, I think you can feel comfortable with. He's a bigger physical version of Kendrick Bourne. Uh, there, there's not, you know, because he has similar speed, similar athleticism, um, similar hands right now. The only thing I've seen is he doesn't drop the ball this year like Kendrick Bourne used to do on certain situations. First and 10, drop the ball. Second and 10, drop the ball. Third down and 16, he's catching it 100%. Um, I think Jawan Jennings can make those plays. Um, but the physicality is what he's going to add. It's an added aspect that he's going to add to this team. 
and able to finish around the in, around the goal line. When we were there, uh, was that was that Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday, I believe. Tuesday, Tuesday I believe. Tuesday. Um, he had a great red zone day. A couple of touchdowns where he got found his little you know place to sit down, and made a catch. Uh, he looked great, and he had other opportunities to make them too. Uh, if we'd had better throws, he probably could have had a three or four touchdown performance. Um, there's a reason that this guy is out there, and and you know as people call him the dog because he plays rough and tough. He does play rough and tough. Uh, jo- Jawan Jennings has answered the bell in terms of concerns. Last year, health, not being able to catch the football. Healthy, came out of the COVID stuff healthier than ever, right? Ready to go, ready to roll, in great condition, great shape. He was obviously putting in the work during that time where he was off, which means he wasn't feeling any symptoms or anything of that nature, so he was able to keep that conditioning up a little bit. And then ball catching. I, I have yet to see him drop a ball that was hitting him right in the hands without someone around him, whether it was training camp and in the game yesterday. Caught both of those tunnel screens, got immediately downfield, was able to maneuver a great vision of the field, didn't run into blockers, knifed his way through and made nice big gains on those types of plays, which is what you want to see. Quick hitters in which the defense isn't expecting it, and you can take a short pass and turn it into big yardage, big gain, and put yourself in second and shorts and third and shorts and things of that nature. Um, And then over the middle, right, in traffic, guys around you, there's a lot of things happening, footsteps, concerns about catching and getting hit immediately. You want to be able to see a big body guy like this get separation, get his body into spots where you can catch the ball, right, take a beating, take a little bit of a hammering, hold on to that thing, and get some extra yardages. You've talked about this with Jawan Jennings plenty of times. That if you get this guy the ball second and eight, things like that, and he's a yard or two away from the sticks, he's getting that first down. Yeah. He's going to bully and body his way. And yesterday we got to see a little bit of that, right? Him catching the ball with guys around him in space and him not going down immediately, not just going to the ground, bullying his way for the extra yards. Yeah, and what you're getting now is players that are interchangeable in the fact that if Debo Samuel is out, you don't lose a part of your offense. You can run the tunnel screens with Jawan Jennings. You know, uh, if you have Brandon Ayuk out, you know you have other guys. You have Trent Sherfield that can still beat somebody down the field. You want to make sure you have pieces that you can still use their talents and skill sets, so you don't eliminate part of your offense. That was what was so hard for Kyle Shanahan last year. You had Debo who had the injury early on. Uh, and so they knew he was going to have the foot issue, so he was going to be out. And then Jalen Hurd does the ACL in camp. Uh, when that happened, that's why Kyle's so visibly upset because part of his playbook just went away because that part that Debo Samuel can run, Jalen Hurd can run. Um, and unfortunately, that happens. It, it just really does hinder you because now you're working within a certain set of parameters in which you didn't anticipate. You thought you were going to have a lot of things to work on and use, and now you don't. Um, so making sure you have guys that can do that is important. That's why it's not as important to have a guy that can just take the top off the defense. You want a guy that can do a lot of different things and a variety of different things. Um, And that's why Travis Benjamin is kind of ahead of a few of the other guys um, because he can still do those other things, but he's on the outside looking in right now. His only hope is that they keep seven receivers as far as this, or that Jalen Hurd's not healthy. Uh, I don't think either one of those things are going to happen. So he's going to be on the outside, you know, looking in, he's going to have his opportunities in the last two games. Uh, because as cuts happen, there's going to be more opportunities for these receivers to make plays in the game. They're going to get more reps. Overall, though, the receiver room is pretty good, and I think it is going to be a, still a huge competition to see who squeezes in because there's no way that Jawan Jennings, Jalen Hurd um, can feel safe being wide receivers five and six. There are other people that are right there that do a lot of great things. So both of those guys also have to work out on special teams, which we did see Jalen Hurd working on special teams on Thursday. Jawan Jennings played uh, special teams on Saturday uh, in the preseason game. So those are areas they're going to have to contribute to make sure that they make this roster the top four set. Everybody else, uh, it's super close. It's a nice clump together. It is. It's a very highly contested competition. It's something that we thought was going to be the case. Some of the position battles we thought were going to be position battles have turned out null and void. They aren't really position battles, and now you have different names competing and fighting for those last two slots because we believe the first four are set. Let us know what you think, though, about the wide receiving pecking order. Is it completely wrong? We're leaving some guys off the list. The Sim- Simba Webster, way up that list. We shouldn't have him as down as we do. Or is this is this pecking order just just completely accurate indeed. We've hit it, nail on the head right, top to bottom. It's pretty good. Maybe you have Brandon Ayuk 1 and Debo Samuel 2nd. We think it's 1A and 1 other A. It's just two A's out there. You love to see them operating the way that they have been. But we want to hear from you, Cutback Crew. Let us know about it down below in the comment section. And while you're down there, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. That way you're notified for all of the great content we still got to come. We got cuts being made soon. We got other guys, right? Other 
practices, mesh practices with the Chargers coming up. We got a second preseason game still. Tons of names they've just brought in. Tons of players to still evaluate. Yeah, who who is going to elevate their game and who's going to take over these roster spots? Um, we're going to get to see people secure these more with their performances uh, and also what we hear from practice. So as this goes on, it might not be at that close of a battle, but I do think it comes down to the last day for a couple of these guys. Um, Jawan Jennings is doing a good job of, of trying to ensure himself a roster spot. Will he be able to make it? Will he be able to hold off You know, somebody that's an incumbent like Richie James? That is a big question. Uh, but overall, it's going to be exciting to watch, and it's going to be fun conversation to have as we move forward and get closer and closer to this Final 53. Absolutely. This Final 53 is going to be a dogfight. Who are the last people to make it on? Who are the people that end up getting cut and going their separate ways? Only time will tell. We'll be excited to talk about it when the time comes and see how accurate our Project 53 predictions are. But until that time, 49ers fans and the Cutback crew, you stay safe. And remember the right way is always the 49ers way.